Hello, folks. Welcome to Business Spotlight. You know, the beauty industry is highly competitive and it's really tough to get differentiation. But my guest today has done a fantastic job of being able to stand out in that really competitive industry. I'm joined by the absolutely fabulous <laughs> Amy Lewis from Mui. You've built a fantastic business. You've had a long background in the beauty industry and now you've got an amazing franchise. Why don't you just share a little bit of the story Amy about how you came about starting your business I started sort of going down the beauty route and then went down to like the spa route and then became spa manager very very young so I worked on cruise ships for quite a while and then I kind of wanted to learn as much as I could you know I wanted to learn I knew I wanted my own business always knew that I just wanted to mess around with other people's money first so I wanted to do every single position role that I could and get to the top of my game within the spa world before I set out on my own so I worked managing one of the biggest spas in the UK and then sort of picked each location I was working at to learn something whether it was budgeting whether it was like a new setup whether it's massive teams, whatever it was. And then in my early 30s, I set up Mui's. So I knew that I wanted to specialise just in waxing. And so to find that audience, I kind of knew I needed to put myself somewhere that had like um, quite a big commute about into the city. I wanted something a bit different. I wanted something a bit niche where we just specialise in waxing and, and nails, where people knew they were going to get the most sensational treatment and service no matter what therapist they went to because there, there was a lot of problems in the industry if you're managing spas, such as recruitment, staffing, all those sorts of things. Like if one staff member leaves, if you work in a big salon and they're specialist in a certain area, then your business is kind of scuppered. So I knew I didn't want that. There was a lot of things I knew I didn't want. So when I created Mui's, it was kind of a salon that I would want to go to as a woman in my 30s, but also what I wanted to work in. There's some really great learnings in there. So you got really clear who your target market was. You yeah. went premium. You knew you wanted to be in the com com commuter belt. So you had yeah. a really good geographical focus as well. And you've grown it into a really strong um, franchise. But I'm sure it's not all been plain sailing, Amy. No. So tell me. <laughs> What have been some of the biggest challenges? That you've I'd had? worked for these massive companies, but I wasn't in charge of marketing. So it was a massive lesson for me to learn. I was sitting there waiting for clients to come in. I knew staff. I knew how to manage people. I knew how to run P&L accounts. I knew all of that. I didn't know how to find the people. I just knew who they were. Um, but the biggest challenge was when I opened my second salon. It was, it was huge. I made some serious mistakes. But I knew that I needed to replicate the brand. So I needed to see if it was just a fluke that it was so successful in that one town. So I needed to open one in a town that I didn't know completely with a whole new audience to see if what I'd learned about marketing, what I'd learned about setting up a business could be repeated. Horsham's the right town for it. It was the right location. Everything was brilliant. But when I done, I'm a really good finance, money's per like figures person. I love figures. I love budgets. And I think it's really important but I didn't add a deficit of my first salon with a deficit of a second salon. And I just didn't add them together. And I nearly lost everything. In the beauty industry, you have your peaks and troughs, you know, you have your, there is always going to be a couple of months, normally January and February, where you would potentially be running at a loss, especially if you're in growth stage. Mm. And I was then opening a new salon, which would be running at a loss for the first sort of six months anyway. And I just didn't add them together. And oh, it was horrible. So tell me, what strategies then did you use to build a fantastic customer base? How did you get, how did you build that up? How did you establish your brand in this really intensely competitive marketplace? Consistency is the biggest thing. So where I said about um, staff, you know, if one person leaves, you're left to then pay thousands of pounds for training for the rest of the team. So my mission was always to make sure all of my team are at the same level. So you may, as a client, choose a particular staff member based on personality. But if that staff member's not in, everybody else can do the treatment exactly the same. Like consistency of standards was so important. And there, that breeds loyalty. But also my biggest word is community. And mm. Our community is so mass, so massively important to me. That's my team as well as my clients. Just, you know, knowing what our clients want is so important. Our clients want to feel safe. They want to feel taken care of and they want to know they're going to get a really good treatment and value for money, whatever they're paying. And as long as I can deliver those, 
they'll keep returning back to us. And that's how we've grown. How do you stay ahead of the market? How do you foster innovation and creativity in your team? Well, my teams are much younger than me. So um, I don't know everything and I rely on them so much. Mm. And also I really encourage them to want to grow and develop within the team. And I, I, have, I do like surveys with the team to make sure that they're happy, but also they've got any new ideas. And I do like ops visits where I go to the team and ask them and I get them involved in every part of the growth of the business. So they tend to come to me with anything new. So like the product range we use is a prime example, the nail range we use. That was a team member of mine that came to me when that first came out saying, I think this is a really good brand. I think we should get on board with this. And we were one of the first companies that went with it. And it's been with us ever since. And it was the best thing we ever done. That, I wouldn't have known that. So always have an open, open policy. Right? And know, that, know that the t- you know, know that you don't know best. I don't, I don't know best. I know business, but when it comes to staying on top of trends, they are far better at it than me. Yes. Giving them that um, responsibility as well, they want to see that their ideas have come to fruition, and I love it when they do that. But then also that goes back to our community, where they feel like they're part of the growth, and they, they're they're. Like my team all help me with new salon own like launches and all of that. So it's really cool. Has there been a pivotal moment or a decision that you've made that significantly impacted the growth of the business? Franchise, for sure. Franchise. Yeah, franchise. I always wanted 10 of my own salons. That was always the goal when I opened. Mm. Um, and it was my business relationships manager with NetWest that said to me, you need to franchise this. Your brand is really, really strong. And you need to franchise this because I was always going to do 10 of my own, have my own training line and product line. That was always the goal. But when she said franchise, it kind of, I was, I, and, you know, it was the, I was having babies as well at the time. <laughs> so it was like, oh, can I deal with two salons? So I've just nearly lost it all. And what now I'm going to franchise? Okay. Well, it's a great way to scale a business, right? It's yeah. just great way. If you've got a great brand. It's a great way to scale a business. Yeah. yeah. If you I like, like a system and process, then it's brilliant. And that's why people buy buy a franchise, right? They buy a franchise for the brand and the process. How do you handle setbacks? What lessons have you learned from setbacks, Amy? Difficult, isn't it? Because when it's your own business, it's so personal. Mm. And you can't help but not take things personally if you get things wrong or you mess up. But I don't know everything. I don't have the answers to everything. And I just think as long as I can learn from something and as long as I can improve and become better then it was worthwhile. And I encourage my team to do the same. Like, I want them to mess up. I want them to try it. I want them to get it wrong because then they'll get it right. So push the boundaries, right? You never know where the limits are until you push them. And the way that yeah. you find the limit or the way you find the failure, you can't just go out and say, I'm going to fail today. you got to go out yeah. and got to push the boundaries, right? And, yeah. and test where the boundaries yeah, are. Yeah, it's just constant learning. And I think that's the excitement like that being an entrepreneur brings isn't it and it's my own rules I'm not answering to anyone else I'm making up my own rules as I go along I think that's what I love the most to be honest you're running a fantastic business you've already mentioned that you're a mum as well how do you maintain and something that a lot of business owners struggle with how do you maintain some kind of balance and continuity in all of that priorities is one of them like making sure I'm prioritizing what the business needs but We've got so many different arms to our business because we've got the franchise, we've got the waxing and tra- the wax products and the training, as well as my own salons. Um, so I feel, and I've got a company called Mooskin as well, like products. So it's like it's constant juggling, and it's down to diarising. So one day I'll have a franchise day, one day I'll have a Moo's day, for instance. Um, but it's also having a really strong team to rely on to pick up the pieces. Prioritising and scheduling is a great place to start, right? <laughs> precisely that and then just knowing like when I'm doing bedtime for the kids that's their time and I've also got a great husband who does a lot of childcare and a lot of household stuff so that helps a lot. Can you share any kind of really effective marketing and growth strategies that you've used to kind of retain and and grow your business? It will be loyalty we've got we use a brilliant brilliant booking system and um, <clears throat> we have a loyalty scheme with it. So they get our clients all get treat cards. So they're like what you'd get your nectar cards on and things like that. And they earn points for every pound that they spend. And then they use those points against free treatments. But also if they refer a friend, they get 100 points. If they do social media posts, they get X amount of points. And we also sell courses. So if they buy six, they get one free. All of those sorts of things that bring value 
mm-hmm. where the clients mm-hmm. feel like they're part of something and they get something back for spending money with us. We also support all of our schools. We know who our audience is. So I think as long as we know who our people are, our clients are, we can then bring them into the fold and they feel like they're part of something. So they want to keep coming back. Mm-hmm. And then they tell their friends. And then, you know, their friends tell their friends. And it, we become very busy because of that. And that is our main marketing strategy. So really, really strong focus on uh, retention, repurchase. Yeah. And um, and you talked about you talked about community. So yeah. how important are building relationships and or how have they been in your, import, in your entrepreneurial journey? It's everything. It's everything to having someone that you can reach out to if you're having a problem, but we support our clients as well. So we have a newsletter that goes out twice a month. Um, and it's not just a sales newsletter. It's what's going on within the community. We kind of embed ourselves, whichever sa- wherever the salon is located within the community. And like I said, with the schools and stuff, we, we support all of that. But on that newsletter, we have a feature section. So if a client has their own business and they think that what they are offering is good for our community, then we will we'll tell, tell people about it. By having that, we involve everybody and everybody seems to want us to succeed. They like to see us to succeed and they like being part of that. So community is everything, but that goes the same with the franchise network, but it also goes the same with our uh, training network as well, where people feel like, you know, it's not just me dictating, it's everybody. I've created quite a few different training courses for the beauty industry, and I've done one on fertility and fertility awareness, because we don't learn anything like that at college. We don't learn that. There's nobody else that's got it. But I actually reached out to my clients and just had a survey for them and said, I want to know because I know there's so many of our clients going through fertility. I used to have these conversations all the time. So I said to them, like, I want to know what would you want people to say to you and what do you not want people to say to you? And how is there anything we can do to make you more comfortable? And all of this. And I had hundreds of responses and their responses create helped me create my training. What advice or wisdom would you share with other aspiring entrepreneurs, people that are still trying to establish their business, get it off the ground? Budgets. <laughs> um, know your figures, know your margins, have a really clear budget in, in place and work towards it. But don't, don't over egg that budget. You know, there's nothing worse if you set yourself targets, especially revenue targets, for instance, if you set them and they're too high and then you're not achieving them, it's really deflating even in your own business. Set really realistic targets and budgets. Have a really clear business plan. Know who your your audience is, but also really take care of the people that are helping you get there. Like really take care of those people. Recruit really well and then love them. Take them, bring them into the fold and, and nurture them, but expect them to leave and that's okay. Look, what a fantastic story from Murray's Amy. Congratulations. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute joy to interview you today. Folks, if you'd like to come and join me on Business Spotlight, we'd love to see you. Come and tell us, uh, come and have an interview like Amy's just done. Come and share the world about your business and we'd love to get that message out there. Just uh, type apply below in the comments and we'll get in contact and we'll invite you on. Until next time, thanks very much for joining. Bye for now.